Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay, so Patricia, Mama Pat, Auntie Pat, has given us a new Mothership tan. I don't have it just yet. Y'all already know I am waiting for a sale. This is a permanent palette, which means it'll go on sale at some point and I'll get it for 30% off. And considering that her prices are now $128, <laughs> I will wait for a sale. So while I'm waiting for a sale though, I thought that I would come here and do my long overdue Pat McGrath Mothership rankings. Now I said I was gonna do this a while back. I did do my six pan and my quad ranking. So I will link that down below if you haven't watched those. But while we are waiting for the new Mothership to go on sale, let's rank my Mothership collection. Now I do have all nine of her Motherships as well as her two Mothership Mega palettes. And I'm gonna include that in this ranking because I feel like it doesn't really go anywhere else and it is a larger palette. It is definitely cheaper than her original, you know, 120, now nine, is it 20? I think it's $28 palette. So, you know, it doesn't exactly quite fit there, but it is her Mothership Mega, so I'm gonna count it there. So that puts me at 11 palettes to rank today. All right, so without further ado, let's dive into the rankings. I'm not gonna be doing any swatches or all of that. I'm just gonna be talking about the palettes and where they fall um, in this. Please don't get mad at me, this is my opinion. If you like a palette more than I do, I am very happy for you. I'm not gonna sit here and argue about what you like, but this is what I like, so. Keep it cute in the comments. You know, this is all love and all fun here. We just like to, you know, have a good time. So keep the vibes nice, all right? All right, let's start. Okay, so coming in at number 11 is one of her original motherships. This is Mothership 2 Sublime. Now, first and foremost, can we just appreciate the artwork of this packaging? Like, I really did appreciate that in her earlier palettes, each box was a different artwork because I felt like it, it, everything just felt special. Every box felt different. Now we've come to realize that she's doing the Divine Rose 2 box over and over again, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So, Mothership to Sublime. Now, this is a beautiful Mothership. Don't get me wrong. I don't not like this. I love all of my Motherships. The quality in all of my Motherships is great. I just think that this is a pretty un unexciting palette. Now, Especially back when Mother Mama Pat was giving us these real exciting color stories, I think this was particularly uninteresting because once you cover the green, it is a pretty sort of neutral palette. Just neutral with a pop of green. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like if you take away these four special shades, the six here are all pretty basic and not super exciting. Now, that doesn't mean this is a bad palette by any means. I do think that there are some showstoppers in here. Like the green in this truly is a really beautiful green. The special shades in this palette really, really are special. Like, look at that. That is stunning. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. Like, I, and I feel bad putting this lower because it's such good quality. But it had to fall somewhere. And when I think about Mama Pat, you know, I'm always going for the ones that are like really, really striking. And this just strikes me as a very everyday, but almost too everyday boring kind of palette, you know? Now coming in at number 10 is another one from that original lineup. Now, I, it doesn't mean that I don't like the original palettes. I just feel like these didn't, don't speak to me as much. Now this is Mothership One Subliminal. This, again, you get the really unique, very different packaging. Mine came a little damaged, which makes me a little sad. But this one is similar to the Sublime one in that it's a very neutral palette, except this one leans more cool toned and you get a pop of blue. Now, what I do appreciate about this one a little bit more is that it has blue in it. I freaking love a nice, vibrant blue shadow. And this one is stunning and the other thing too is that one this special shade these two special shades here are pretty much multi chromes slash duochromes like this one has such a gorgeous blue gray flip and this one here looks white in the pan but it has a really really strong blue shift as well so when you swatch it it's that iridescent blue color which I think is really stunning and you can just plop one of the mattes down here and really just like 
put that into the center for a really cute halo eye. It's a good inner corner highlight. You know, the blue is a really, really nice, vibrant blue, which just gives it a little bit edge over the green. And then this shade is almost like a blue-purple iridescent shade that just makes it so much more special. And because I feel like the shades in here are just a little bit more special than the shades in the green palette, I think this one stands out to me a little bit more. Now, you definitely can get some pretty neutral looks and I think this one also ranks a little bit higher because it is more cool toned so it challenges me a little bit. You know I don't really go for a lot of cool toned looks and when it comes to Patricia I feel like she doesn't give us a ton of cool toned palettes like a lot of hers are very pinky mauvey warm color stories so to have this dedicated cool tone palette with some really really unique shades that have really really interesting flips and you know just sparkles in them this one definitely stands out just a little bit more than Sublime. Okay, now coming in at number nine is the first Mothership Mega. This is Celestial Divinity. Now, he, I almost put this in last place for the simple fact that when I receive my palette, and I've talked about this before, my sticker was and still is crooked. Crooked. Like, do you see this? Like, why is it so crooked? Here's the thing, you know, this palette was $75, I believe, Pat McGrath is a luxury brand. This is ghetto. I don't think anybody should receive a palette that has a crooked sticker on it. So that really, really bugged me. So this is, this almost came in last place off the sheer fact that the sticker is crooked. Now, taking that aside though, when you open it up, the color story is stunning. I do, you know, hate the packaging overall because you do get the like little cheap ribbons. This is all cardboard. But I understand that in order to create these shadows and have it sell at the price point of $75, you know, you had to cut corners somewhere. So the packaging was where the cut corners were cut. But what I love about this is that this is just such a beautiful palette with such a rich color story. Now this is giving me that colorful vibes that I think we all love Mama Pat for. So you do get more of those pinky purpley vibes, but I think that you get some really nice sort of neutral shades to keep it in that neutral family. You get a standard yellow gold, but then you get this really great deep green shade that is like the baby sister to Gigabyte, and I believe this one is called Megabyte, so it's very similar to Megabyte, it's just not in that special formula. And even this shade here, Venusian Orchid, is just so pretty. It's like, kind of like Scarab from the Melt and, Ty and Sydney Grace Tiny Marvels palette. So I think you get, you know, some greens, some purples, some pinks, which I love, you know, when you see this, you can immediately think that, oh, this is just another purple pinky palette, but I do think that you do get more diversity in here than you, than you would originally think at looking at this. Now, what does bring this palette down is her mattes, and I think overall in Mama Pat's palettes, her mattes tend to be her downfall because they all tend to lean mauvey, pinky, purpley, which means that you always end up with some level of mauve in your look because of where the mattes are. I really wish that the mattes she had chosen for this had been browns. Just give me a brown, any kind of brown. A deep brown, a deep chocolate brown, a deep neutral brown. Like, had she taken just one of these shades and made it like a neutral brown shade, I think that that would have went over so much better. But Taking that aside, we know we come to Patricia for her shimmers. The shimmers in here are bomb.com. Can't complain. I really, really love the shimmers in here. The quality in here is perfection. It's Mama Pat's top shimmer quality, which I appreciate because, you know, with this cheaper palette, I expected the quality to go down, but it didn't. It was still top notch. Coming in at number eight, we have the original Divine Rose palette. Now, I think that this is a really nice one for folks that always wanted to try Mama Pat, but don't want that over the top blingy sparkly thing. Like Mama Pat is known for her shimmer. She's known for being like, you know, really bold, but not everybody's into that. And I think Mama Pat gave us a palette for the girls that want her formula, but don't want it to be that intense. Now this looks really boring. I will give you guys that. It is a very 
cool toned neutral palette. And I will say even the special shades in here don't seem to be the most special of special shades. Now this I think is a really, really beautiful special shade. It's one of those that is more of a topper, which means that you can just plop it on top of any other shade and it gives it really, really nice sparkle. And you do have like a really nice dual chrome shade here that shifts pink gold. Um, and then you do have a really beautiful kind of iridescent shade with a pink base to it that I think is really pretty. But when I compare the special shades in this palette to the special shades in the other palettes, I feel like this doesn't give the same level of oomph that the other shades do. But don't get me wrong, this baby is beautiful. Like this is one of the palettes that I didn't expect to love as much as I did but it's ranking higher than some of the others I mentioned because I do use it pretty frequently. This is the palette that I reach for when I want something a little extra for work, but I still wanna keep it in that neutral vein. Like every time I wear a Pat McGrath palette, I have people ask me, what is on your eyes? Like without fail. And if I want to have something that's a little bit more standout without being over the top, you know, this is a really good one for that. It definitely does lean a little bit more cool tone, so it pulls me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but it does give me really unique, different looks for me because I tend to do more warm looks. And I can keep it really, really just sort of simple in this area here, or I can add some of these special shades without it being too over the top. So this one is ranking a little bit higher because I reach for this more often than I thought I would, and I really do enjoy the looks that come out of this because I think that they tend to be kind of elevated and classy and just really beautiful with a little extra sass. It, it's like spicy corporate America. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's what I'm going it's, it's like a spicy corporate America where it's like I have arrived, but you know, I have arrived in like, in like a nice sophisticated way without it being too over the top. Like I, like I run into the building, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what else to explain it, y'all. That's that. Coming in at number seven is the big sister to Divine Rose. This is Divine Rose 2. Now, I think this is a palette that I expected to like more than I actually do. I remember this when it was first revealed. It like pretty much broke the internet. And this is when we actually first started seeing this imagery, which we now know exists forever. No, this isn't the first time. I lied. This is not the first one. But anyways... This imagery kind of persists after the second, I think, Midnight Sun. Is it Midnight Sun? Anyways. But here we have Divine Rose 2. Now this I do have in the limited edition pink packaging, which is stunning. I love that she gave us the option to do like this packaging. It does kind of mess up the fact that everything else I have is black, but whatever. I, I ain't mad at it. Now mine looks like it's in perfect condition because I did originally buy this in black. And then when she restocked the pink I was like no I actually want the pink so I sold the back and I bought the pink so this doesn't look touched because I really haven't used this one since I you know sold my black version but I did use the black version a lot no I really want to use this and love this more than I do it's just for some reason I'm not called to this and maybe it's because the color story and this is really pink as you can obviously tell and I don't really go for pink or straight up pink looks that often. And even though we have this multi-chrome here, VR Sextra Terrestrial, which is stunning, you know, Pat McGrath isn't exactly the mecca when it comes to multi-chromes. If I want a multi-chrome, I'm gonna go to my Preachies For Your Face, my Terra Moons, you know, Black Moxie Cosmetics, because as you can see, this does not have the same kind of wet feeling that a lot of indie brands have. Like, it's very, very dry, to be quite honest. And the shift is not as strong as it would be in, like, other indie brands. So, even though it's beautiful, we get a multi-chrome and Pat's formula, it's definitely not something that I reach for or I'm like, ooh, I want to use Pat's multi-chrome specifically. That's not where my head goes. And the other shades in here, I think they're just, they're, they're nice, but they don't really, you know, they don't really make me feel like any sort of special tingle. So these are the other um, special shades, which are nice, but I don't know, something about this palette, even though it is really beautiful, it just doesn't call, damn, I almost dropped the palette, look, oh, my heart is pumping out my chest. 
Look at Jesus. Anyways, even though the palette is really beautiful, something about it just doesn't call to me. When I think about reaching for my motherships, you know, this is definitely not one that strikes me as, you know, one that I really, really want to reach for. It is one that I think a lot of people love and I understand why because it's really bold. It's different. It was coming at a time where we were like, Patricia, give us something different. So I understand why people love it. Uh, I just, I just, I feel like I need to play with this more because like... I have to force myself to use this more because it just doesn't naturally come as one that I want to reach for. Coming in at number six is Mothership 5. And again, we have like the very similar imagery. So we have the woman with the bees and all that. It's just in red. I think this might have been the first time we saw this. I think this was the first introduction of this palette. Now, this is also another one that broke the internet. I think that this was when people were like, Ooh, okay, Patricia. And for good reason. This is stunning. Now, I fell in love with this. I've used this so many times. But now the longer that I have this in my collection, the more it just gives me Christmas vibes and the less I want to reach for this. So even though I think this is a stunning palette, I think this is a really great introduction to the brand. I feel like I am only really inspired to pull out this palette when it comes to Christmas time. Like, I think you get the really, really lovely vibrant red. This kind of like duochrome shade that leans a little green which i really like because it's a great top and it works really really well with the red look at that sparkle oh it's stunning but overall this just gives me christmas vibes like it's not a palette that i want to just reach for on an everyday basis it is one that i reach for during christmas time but the rest of the year not so much and here's the thing I don't know if it's just my palette. I don't know if this was a fluke of flukes because I have no issues with Pat's palettes for the most part. But this shade here just doesn't perform very well at all. Like, I don't know why. And it's not it that it performs badly. It just doesn't perform as well as Pat's shades. Like, it's very gritty. It's very dry. doesn't pick up well with a brush. Like, this was the first time I actually used a Pat McGrath palette. And I was like, that feels different. That feels not like it's supposed to be. That doesn't feel right. So, it's kind of a dud, but it's not a real true dud because you can see it's a beautiful shade. It's pretty textured. It just feels just really dry and just off. So, it ranks a little bit lower because I do feel like that's not the best representation. However... I think that was a fluke like I honestly have never had any issues with Pat's palettes in any form so I don't know maybe I just got a bad one but yeah for the, the main reason why this is ranking lower is because while this is a beautiful palette it's definitely one that I feel is seasonal for me in that I only really want to wear it during the Christmas time so it has very limited use um, in my collection coming in at number five is one that I think is so underrated this is the, what is this one called again? This is not, this is the Mothership Decadence. Now, I loved the imagery for this because it's this really beautiful crown. Unfortunately, I bought this too late in the game, like after they changed the packaging. So I don't get the tie thing. This is literally a sticker. Like, that was really annoying. <laughs> but I'm gonna let it go. So Decadence, I think is one that's so underrated because it is all shimmer. Like, I get it. When we talk about Pat McGrath, you know, we're really talking about her special formula. And when it comes to paying $125 or $128, you know, you're really paying for those very sparkly special formula shades. So when she released this and it was like, okay, this is an all shimmer formula, all shimmer palette. We don't get any special shades. Why is it still so expensive? I get that 100%. But the more I use this palette, the more I look at this palette, the more I love it because it's so colorful, which, you know, we don't get from Pat anymore. And you get these really unique shades that we also don't get from Pat anymore. Like, we have two blues in this palette. We get the standard gold, so ignore that. You do get some nice silvers and all of that. And the best thing about Pat's shimmer formula is that it blends out like a matte. So, these could be one and done shades. Like, you can literally take one shade, blend it out, use it as a matte, and then take that same shade and use it as a shimmer and come up with a monochromatic look. Or you can just take one shade and put it all over the lid and blend out the edges. Like, it's so versatile i think the other thing too is that this palette is the only one that is scented so it does have like a vanilla a light vanilla scent like it's not too much and i really like that. i really like that so 
I feel like this is still underrated because you know people really want that high shine that high sparkle but Mama Pat's shimmer formula is really good even when you take out the special shades I think that she has such a quality shimmer formula that even if you don't get it the special shades that this is really worth it and this is definitely one that I'm always like thinking about it it's one that always pops to mind for me so it had to rank a little bit higher because it's a good one y'all don't don't sleep on that one coming in at number four is mothership number nine utopian dream or as some people call it utopian nightmare utopian scheme I've heard everything and here's the thing, okay? Everybody was up in arms because Mama Pat gave us unicorns and these rainbows when she was advertising this and then basically gave us Divine Rose 3. And I get it. I 100% agree. Her promotional pictures did not match up to the palette. And this is the palette right here. But taking the promotional pictures aside, this is a beautiful palette. This is absolutely stunning. I think the quality in here is perfect. You do get the three mattes again, real mauve tone mattes. And I feel like out of the Divine Rose family, so, and I'm considering this a part of the Divine Rose family, Utopian Dream gives me the best of everything. So you do get a multi-chrome shade and this is actually in that more wet texture and wet formula. It's not as wet as a typical indie brand, but it looks way more metallic than the one in Divine Rose 2. So I appreciate that. And I think that this purple is so beautiful. Like it really is a stunning, stunning shade on its own. So I feel like, you know, this one called to me so much more than the Divine Rose 2. And it gives me, in my, I feel like it's kind of Divine Rose 1, Divine Rose 2 smushed together and had like the perfect baby. So if you didn't have anything from the Divine Rose line, you can just get this one and you'd be totally fine. I think that this is such a beautiful color story. I think that this is one that actually speaks to me. I feel inspired to use it. So, you know, whenever I like think about this, I just have to think past everybody getting mad about the fact that, oh, this didn't line up with the promotional pictures. Where was the green? Where was the blue? Yes, I get it. You guys are 100% valid. But taking it as a standalone palette, it's it's real good. It's real freaking good. So, it's coming in at number four. Don't fight me. It's just that good. It's that girl. Okay, coming in at number three. This might surprise you guys. But yes, the Mothership Mega 2. This is Celestial Odyssey. I think that this is a freaking amazing palette. Now, first and foremost, packaging, so much better than the original Mothership Mega, both in terms of the fact that, you know, the outside just feels sturdier and more luxe, more sticker and crooked, but then also when you open it up, this is actual black lacquer, so it's not black cardboard. So I appreciate that they did take some time to make this feel a little bit more luxe, because I think that is important for a brand of Pat McGrath's like stature. Like regardless of the fact that this is 70 something dollars for a ton more shades, I think that they needed to put a little effort into making this a little bit more looks. Now the reason why this is ranking higher is because I think that this is just such a good palette. Like I don't even know what to say to it. Now we had been calling for Mama Pat to give us color and in this one you can tell it's still very, very pink, but we get a coppery shade here, which I love a good copper. Mama Pat gave us a blue, and then she gave us a green. Like, we get these three shades, which honestly stole the show for me. And the other thing, too, is that we have neutral browns. So, yes, we do get the pinky shades. You know, Mama Pat has to give us some mauves. But we have neutral browns, just regular neutral brown shades in the palette that we can use. So, I love the fact that I can get so much looks out of this. Every single shade in here is top notch. There's not a single dud. The packaging is just so much more luxe and elevated. This is something that I fe would feel comfortable traveling with. And this is something that I feel like I can get a ton of different looks from. I can go blue. I can go pink. I can go orange. I can go green. You know, I can keep it pink with the, the pinky mattes. Or I can keep it with the um, more neutral mattes. I can keep it light. I can add depth to things. It just feels like this gives me a lot more and more of what I wanted from Pat and more of what I want Pat to keep doing. So it's coming in at number three because I just feel like it's it's such a good, good one and I would love to see Mama Pat keep doing more Mothership Megas that kind of like lean like this one. Okay, coming in at number two is one of her OG palettes. This is the Subversive. This is Mothership number three. 
this, I went real back and forth between this and the actual number one palette because I'm not going to lie, I think that this has the most unique color story that Pat McGrath has ever had and it has the most unique special shades. I think this has the most special special shades. So I almost made this number one. Now look at this baby. This is everything. If you are somebody that's into grunge, this is going to be your palette because you have these two very, very deep shades. You know, you get a deep chocolate brown and a deep matte. And then you have like these really, really colorful shades. Now with this, you can get so many looks. Like you can keep it purple. You can keep it pretty brown or neutral with these four shades here. You do have this purple blue duochrome shade. You have a pink shade. You have a standard gold. And then you have another iridescent shade. And these four special shades are everything. This shade Gigabyte, in my opinion, is the best, the best best special shade mama pat has to offer like it is a green gold shade that is just absolutely unbelievable on the lids and i think that if you have a deeper um skin tone if you have a more golden skin tone that you would really like that and here we have like two other special shades i just really want you guys to see how special these special shades in submissive are now this is a pink dual chrome, so it's like pink gold. And then we have the purple blue dual chrome. So when you look at these three special shades together, like it is literally stunning. So you can see the level of sparkle and the level of just, you know, how real special these shades are. And whenever I do want something that's a little bit over the top and I'm like, I want to go over the top with Patricia, Subversive is the palette that I go for. When I when people ask me about, you know, like, what is the Pat McGrath palette that I should start with? It's I oftentimes think about Subversive because it does give you that real over the top artistry kind of vibe that I think, you know, most of us really think about when we think about Pat McGrath. Now, she definitely has some of these more, I don't call them basic, but you know, normal palette, not normal you know what i'm talking about she has these other palettes but i think that if you want the true artistry of pat mcgrath start with subversive subversive is where you want to go first because that is the one that like blew my mind to no end okay that being said though we have to talk about my number one palette and that is none other than mothership midnight sun this is mothership six i believe um this one, I feel like people weren't really checking it for Midnight Sun, and it got such bad reviews initially. But honestly, I can't... This is the mothership I dream of. I, I don't know what else to say. I can't stop thinking about it. I always tell people that this is the mothership that I love the most, and that's why it is my number one mothership. Even though Subversive is that girl for that over-the-top look... This is the one that I just cannot get enough of. I almost bought a backup for this. I have more eyeshadows that I know what to do with. And there's no way I'm ever going to go through this. But I almost bought a backup of this because it's so damn good. Now, what I love about this is everything. <laughs> like, even if you cover up the four special shades here, I love these shades on this side. This green is so beautiful. I've used this before to create like a really nice almond green. This orange copper shade is literally what I think every orange copper shade should be like. And I think that this purple pairs so nicely with the orange. Like, I think I've done looks com combining these two, and I just think it's stunning. And this is one of my favorite topper shades. I think it's such a beautiful champagne that isn't too icy on someone of my complexion. So let's still watch a root. So this is the copper. Look at that. I want every couple to look like this because on my eyes, it's like heaven. So freaking pretty. And then we have the green. This is the purple, which I love. I know a lot of people don't think that it's super special. And I'll agree, it isn't the most special formula, but I really, really like that purple shade. And then lastly... This topper has some of my favorite sparkles. Like, it's not too icy. So, when it comes to, you know, Midnight Sun, 
I do think that it does give me the perfect mix of wanting to keep things nice and neutral. And with the neutrals being more warm toned, I feel like it's easier for me to work with. I feel like it suits my complexion so much better. But then I also have that purple and that orange that gives me the color and the sparkle that I need. I feel like I can create so many different looks with it. I can go really, really sort of simple every day or I can go really, really over the top lava of boom because even the topper shades just add that extra sparkle and that dimension. So if you are not into the over high artistry of Subversive, I definitely say Midnight Sun is your girl. It is my favorite of favorites and I probably will end up buying another one just to have because it really is that good. <laughs> it really is. All right, so that is it for me, guys. Those are my rankings of my Pat McGrath motherships. I, like I said, I will be buying number 10, but I'm gonna be waiting on a sale. I know that she does it kind of like every season, so summer, spring, fall. So hopefully there'll be a fall sale coming soon and we can get it for 30% off. If not, Black Friday is around the corner. So just hold on a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, so let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite Pat McGrath mothership, whether or not you have picked up Mothership 10, whether it's interested, whether you are interested in picking it up or not. I want to know all of that. Leave those deets down below. As always, I love you guys so very much. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe. You know what it is. Subscribe, like, comment, tell a friend if you think they like the content. As always, I love you guys so very much. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!